Again, I do find it a little odd that, you know, the trailer looks one way and then the show looks the complete opposite. That's all I'm gonna say. Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl JD here back with another video. Today is going to be a little bit of a random one and it's really just because I saw this over on Instagram and felt the need to talk about it ASAP because I was like, I feel the same way. I really do. I'm honestly happy someone finally brought it up. But Lauren Speed, I don't know if you guys remember her, but she was actually on Love is Blind season one. And I did a, I guess somewhat of a review of pretty much all of the episodes and then also the reunion and then after the altar over on my main channel. But that was before I switched all that content over to this channel. Not too long ago, Lauren, she went on Twitter and she was basically calling Love is Blind, the show over on Netflix out, the post over on Hollywood Unlocked, I believe. Leave. It says, Love is Blind alum Lauren Speed calls out the show for cutting out black women. How come they always in the trailer but not the show? I had the same question, Lauren. I had the same question. Black women were all in that trailer before the Love is Blind season episodes even dropped. They had them all up in the trailer. And then when we get to the actual show and the dating portions, when they're in the pods and they're dating, they were nowhere to be found. Lauren and I think maybe one other person, I, I think, in terms of the engaged couples that they showed, I do find it strange that in season one and season two, they had the same amount of couples engaged. And I'm just like, there has to be a lot more people that are like, clicking than what you're showing us. It was the same, I think four couples, I think. Four or five, I can't remember. But either way, at the end of it all, it would only be two couples that end up getting married. And I'm just kind of like, ain't no way. Like, that's just not, not making sense. It's not making sense. And especially when it came to the first season in particular, there was a lot more black women than I remember from season one. And they did not show them. Lauren is probably the only black woman that I saw at all, really, <laughs> on the show. Besides, you know, the others that were just in the background as like the supporting cast. But before I go on my rant and tangent, pretty much agreeing with Lauren, I'm gonna let y'all hear or see, or both, yeah, hear and see what Lauren had to say on Twitter. So she says, I don't like how LIB, AKA Love is Blind, be cutting all the black women. How come they are always in the trailer but not the show? So that's what she started off saying. And then she says, I know it's slim picking, but about 85% of them couples be forced. Just moving forward for entertainment purposes. Anyway, y'all could at least force some more sisters to move forward throughout the show. I mean, I wouldn't wanna see necessarily anything forced, but I do think that if it was like a forced black couple, it would probably be a little bit more entertaining, at least to me. I'm just gonna be honest, I feel this might sound a little racial, I'm sorry, but it's just when it comes to TV, especially in this case, I guess it could sort of be considered reality TV, but I guess it might be a little scripted here and there, obviously. But when it comes to reality TV, me personally, I find watching black people a little bit more entertaining. I really personally don't care, you know, what race you are, but I just noticed that they tend to have a little bit more spunk, a little bit more to say, you know, more vibrancy. Actually, now that I think about it, yes, there was another black couple. Yeah, I can't remember her name though. But um, I think she ended up finding out that the guy was like bisexual or something. Y'all remember? I can't remember his name or her name, but it was like a big thing, a big blow up. And she ended up leaving and they called off the engagement, of course. But yeah, either way, moving on from that, there wasn't that many black faces at all. But you know, I'm just saying, I'm not trying to force anything, period. But I just noticed that, you know, for me, it's a little more entertaining when there's like some black folk. <laughs> just, that's just me. I'm not saying that white people or people of other races are not entertaining. I'm not saying that in the slightest, but let's move on. Someone had responded to Lauren, dot slash Nick, I believe. They said, I wonder what it is. Are they just not clicking enough with other participants? How do you think they choose what makes the final show? And then she responds, she says, it's couples that get engaged that aren't even shown sometimes. I think they only show what they deem most entertaining. Yes, 
again, I mean, it's TV. I would expect them to choose or focus more so on the people on screen that are giving the most, that are clearly the most entertaining, bring the most to the table. And, you know, obviously they have that big personality in a way, or maybe they say funny things every now and again. You know what I mean? So it makes sense, but I do find it interesting that they try to diversify the cast when it comes to the trailer to get people to watch. But when it comes to seeing everybody interact with each other regardless of race really you know you don't really see too much black faces even though they're in the trailer why it's like are you trying to diversify your audience with the trailer and then when it comes to the actual show you're just like psych like i don't know it's just a little strange to me you know i mean personally I understand at the end of the day, it has obviously everything to do with entertainment factor. If they're not drawing the numbers, then you know, the show would probably get axed. So in their minds, they're like, okay, we need to make this as interesting as possible because we need those numbers and we need them high, okay? So I can understand at the end of the day why they do what they do and they only show a certain amount of couples because obviously there's so many steps. If you guys ever watched the show, there's so many things that go on in between those episodes, between all the couples, even the small amount of couples that they actually show. There's a lot to follow. There's a lot to follow along with and and there's a lot to edit. So that would be a really long behind show if they were to show all of the couples. You know what I mean? Again, I do find it a little odd that, you know, the trailer looks one way and then the show looks the complete opposite. That's all I'm gonna say. But when it came to season two, season two was probably the most forced that I'd seen. Season one seemed a little bit more realistic. It seemed like it definitely had more of a flow to it and it made sense. But when it came to the couples in season two, it just felt like, oh, Let's put these two together. You two go together. You two get married. And then, you know, of course, after the altar, let's just get divorced because we can't deal with our problems. <laughs> you know, it's just like, I did not understand what the point of this was, really. I mean, at the end of the day, they're just gonna get divorced anyway. Like, why even get married? I don't, I don't understand. I just think that in season two, they really just kind of did it just because they felt like they had to. I don't think it was because they felt like they were ready for that type of commitment. But yeah, I was gonna do a review of the After the Altar for season two, but it wasn't worth it to me. Nothing interesting really happened. Everything that I thought would happen happened. Shayna is still a snake. I wish her the best with her engagement, but she's still a snake and she pretends like she doesn't know what she did behind the scenes. It's just like, stop it. But then, you know, when it comes to Shane even, like he's also, yeah, he, he's interesting. He's a flip-flopper. So I don't blame, um, what's her face? Jeez, I forgot what the, the Asian girl name. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm gonna put it on the screen if I remember when I'm editing. But yeah, she was always just complaining about everything. I'm the victim. It's just like every two seconds, just like reminding people that she's the victim. But it's just something like, okay, we get it. You know what I'm saying? But I Thing they should have invited Jake back. As annoying as he was, he was probably the more interesting in the whole pack. Him and Jared. I think Jared? Jared? Jared. I can't remember how to say his name. But either way, I just knew all them couples were gonna fail. All those couples were forced. I think it was Mallory and geez, Salvador? Sal, Sal, yeah. <laughs> I now forgot their names. I'm sorry. But I just. I knew all of them were gonna fail as a couple. No offense, but mm. y'all let me know what y'all think about that. But I just think what Lauren said overall was rather true, rather interesting. Something to look into, I feel, you know, when it comes to those producers or whatever of the show. Something to consider because I feel like it looks kind of sketch. But anyways, I'll leave y'all with that. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.